Hello YouTubers, fellow farmers, farming fans and anyone else that's probably got lost and landed on this video. Um, I've been a bit quiet on my channel because not much content uh, and I knew this was coming so I thought I'd hold off until this. So this is a tour of our new farm which we have got a tenancy with um, Hampshire County Council. Uh, so I'll do a little tour of the farm. Uh, we still don't have any animals yet, apart from my mate there, Rex. And um, yeah, so I'll talk about what we're going to do, um, what I'm looking forward to learn, or yeah, all sorts of bits. So join me on the farm tour. So here's the yard, uh, well, driveway, farmhouse there, one of the fields there. Um, as I said, there's no, it's empty. Which is quite daunting but exciting at the same time welcome so we have it we've got some sheds down there which i'll find a job for them storage or whatnot mix relax um so we've got a little shed there feed bin which is handy little container there potential workshop um then we've got a shed which used to have cows in but i'll see what i'll do with it um another little shed there another feed bin other shed there with a bit of straw which the previous farmer bill left us and his wife uh i can't think it's lisa yeah very kind of them got a muck heap there which i asked them to keep because fertilizer is quite expensive and i'm sure it'll come in handy um but yeah let's go and look at the fields so this is one of the fields. Um, I'm still learning the field names. I can't remember what this one's called, but we've got the M27 just behind there. Um, and it's quite handy because that gorse uh, bush you got there is quite a decent sound barrier. Um, so this field here, my plan is obviously pigs. Um, oh, got a rabbit there. Um, Rex didn't see that. Uh, yeah, so this field, I'll partition it, probably split it into four. And then um, when I put pigs in, I'll just keep rotating them. Then we've got, because uh, this was for horses, there's another field that's split there. There's two down there. So um, I'll split them up and let the pigs root it up because the ground is fairly, it's fairly solid. Topsoil is quite, well, a few people that have come or more experts than I am topsoil is about like that excuse my dry dry hands farmer hands um yeah the topsoil is pretty uh there's not much topsoil so it needs it needs a bit of work the land so plan is to get the pigs in let them root it up don't really want to use much um machinery and then rex no hey rex rex here his recall is pretty good luckily um, you've got a lot of rabbits, but yeah, as I was saying, um, I want to get the pigs to root it up and then hopefully I'm going to go on, uh, this countryside stewardship scheme called GS4. So it's herbal lace, um, uh, with, uh, legume rich, uh, plants. So that will come in handy with the pigs, with the legumes. Obviously I'll also feed them, um, to start with bought feed, but then I want to try and make, make our own feed at some point maybe in year two we've got seven years so um no rush but a little bit of rush so yeah this is the first field and then we've got probably one of my best bits of uh the farm we've got about three hectares of woodland in here and honestly it's too good it is too good yeah this to me is honestly yeah i'm so excited about this bit <coughs> this bit of the farm sorry um it's uh as you see obviously it's a woodland plenty of bluebells which look so good um luckily not not all the woodland has bluebells some some patches don't have it um but i am looking forward to one learning more about woodland management because i'm definitely not an expert in on that um on that front and two um just seeing how uh we can um 
uh, farm with nature and well because there's plenty of birds here there's an app called Merlin which my friend Matt uh, a sheep farmer in Cornwall um, suggested to me and every time I come in here I put the app on and it tells me what birds are in the woods and since being here I think I've spotted over over 10 species which is pretty cool um, and then I've also got another app called Seek which I get all these things I had no idea about or I didn't really care about them <laughs> uh, which is probably a bad thing but it's a reality uh, and Seek shows me what the plants are so if I, don't, if I don't know what a plant is I just put my camera on the plant and it tells me and I think in the, the few we've only been here now we moved this weekend so we've been here about uh, less than a week and so far I just feel that my my knowledge of what's going on in the wood here uh, that's just a bit of drainage from um, up in the yeah, uh, yard I think uh, clean water I'm hoping um, again all, all these things I'm looking forward to chatting to people that are in charge of this sort of stuff to if there's anything that needs fixing it needs needs to be fixed because I can't I can't um, be responsible for something that happened before me so just gonna have to get probably sort of water samples to see where that water is coming from if it's clean or not and if it's not clean he's looking at um, but yeah the yeah, the few days I've been coming here my interest in what's going on in here and the changes uh, that I keep seeing every day is definitely increasing nice high seat there I went up that the other day it's a bit dodgy but we need to fix it it's quite good just to sit there we get a few bit of deer in here just sit and watch them um, this patch is what I was saying there's a few patches like this with no bluebells on um, Rex, oh here he is and also seeing Rex running around the wood like this is just it is good it's amazing um, but yeah so this woodland um, obviously need to talk to woodland experts to see what we can do with it but I'm keen to trial um, what species can be like put in here at controlled levels because I've noticed every time you mention animals in woodland everyone just goes oh no you can't do that but rather than getting told no I want to get told why and I want to explore um, all avenues of why it can be it can't be done and if it can be done ways to do it so that it doesn't cause a detrimental effect to nature um, but yeah that's why for those reasons why this is my favorite part of the farm easily like can you imagine pigs through this clear all the brambles up or because we're thinking of getting goats and sheep as well so goats would love this um, well Rex definitely loves it another patch of bluebells here um, again it's one of those things which is why when talking about access to countryside Rexy access to countryside for people like before moving here yes I knew bluebells grew in the woods but I didn't really it didn't really bother me but like now I want to see it every day because it's one of those things of if you haven't got it you can't miss it or have any feeling towards it that's why the countryside should be accessible to everyone really um, spots like that uh, I think I'd probably leave for um, uh, yeah for wildlife like worms, beetles um, whatever other thing can make a habitat there there's one there there's another one around the corner down there um, we also have a water feature here Rex wait for me man we also have a little water feature here which I love I never knew that I liked sort of not what it's not a waterfall but water features like this like since until i went to scotland recently and um yeah it's just so cool so yeah we've got a little mini i can call it a waterfall but take that bit of plastic there well done humans littering at every opportunities we can actually that's that's one of the big jobs I'm gonna have is picking up litter in this wood oh my god so much litter um, but yeah so that's that's the woodland 
uh, gonna go through now to some fields. Rex knows his way through this place already now. He's got a nice little route he, he plans out every time he runs the same, the same way. Right, here's the next part. Um, again, I can't remember the name. I think that field is called Garson's because there's a farm shop back there called Garson's. So yeah, that field's called Garson's. Um, so we've got a swampy bit here, which makes me think, and I have to talk to uh, a guy called Andy. Um, potentially there's a spring somewhere there. I don't know, but this bit is always stodgy. And I've got plenty of, got told this is called hemlock. And apparently hemlock is poison, it's one of the most poisonous plants in the UK. Question though, to all you sheep and goat farmers out there, I don't know if pigs would eat it, but would a sheep or a goat eat hemlock? Question one. Question two, if, if they would eat it, where did evolution go wrong? Because surely, like wild animals don't eat things that are poisonous, so how... How does that work? And has anyone grazed sheep or goats where there is hemlock and seen any issues? That that would be something I'd, I'd be interested to know because I don't want to find out the hard way. Um, but yeah, so plan I think here, if it is poisonous, is probably to fence this bit off and uh, talk to a Kenyan friend, uh, Agnes. We grow, uh, so, Kenya, I'm Kenya obviously, I'm half Luo, half Kikuyu, and in the Kikuyu tribe, uh, there's a, a plant called arrowroot, uh, I think I think it's Nguashe, no is it Nguashe or Nduma, anyway I'll be corrected by any Kenyans that listen, they, that grows in spots that are wet like this, so a suggestion from my friend Agnes was that why not plant arrowroot here, and not a bad suggestion, so we'll see, we'll see where we go with that, and if that's the case, I think Hi, my mum will definitely have to give me a hand because they're both Kikuyu and I think they've probably done done it once or twice and I've never planted arrow roots before. Or sweet potatoes actually, that would go quite well there. Their job will be to keep the stock away from them. Got another little woodland there, again, goat city. That would be perfect for goats. Um, and then all this here, up until that corner there, is ours as well so again um my mate chris i'll have to follow him to a few market days uh to learn to learn the trade of picking out sheep at a market because i need i do need some lambs um another thing james said he's gonna give us some lambs as a moving in present so i look forward to them but uh like i said uh, you probably can't see it but m27 is up there if they zoom on the camera and do it any justice m27 is up there so when you're in the in the field here you can hear the road but not so much when we're at home because of the that gorse bush sun's out hopefully it stays like this because i have a feeling this field can get pretty wet in the winter so yeah the field stretches all the way this way that's Garson's. This one is called Kelly's because apparently there's a lady that used to live there called Kelly. So the field names are quite creative, really. I never used to, again, something else about back to the whole woodland thing that if you don't have something, you don't really think much of it. I remember asking, like, why the hell do fields have names like 60 acres, 15 acres, or whatever? But actually, when you think about the history behind it, like this one called Kelly's because there's a lady called Kelly there. It's pretty cool, really. Um, or maybe I'm just a geek, I don't know. Or of farm farming geek i don't know but uh again this is another field that's quite topsoil it's pretty um shit so it didn't have i think most of the stock that was here was horses and and there's a lot of compaction so i'm looking to get sheep to graze it and then before i put any any um new grass in rex rexy and then we've got the railway line just beyond there. Um, and something actually I didn't know here, I had a guy from um, uh, Soil Association the other day, Mr. Ben Raskin, very knowledgeable guy, 
tell him about, that, about these trees here. We got one called Alda, Alda, maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong, sorry. And another one's Willow. So apparently these are good for goats, uh, be used for forage as well. And these these here, I don't know whether they've been planted or they've just sort of um, seeded and grown themselves, but I'm keen to have, or as Ben suggested, I'm keen to have this corner here and just plant uh, willow and alder because it's already growing so clearly they like it here and I also he said that it's quite because it's quite boggy here for whatever for some reason um, they like quite wet wet areas so this will be a willow willow alder corner and um, it could be paradise for goats as well so looking forward to that come on Rex and then um, again brambles goat food honestly I, I think the more I walk these fields this is probably I can't remember how many times I have now but the more I walk around it sinks it the fact that we actually have a farm sinks in a bit more because it hasn't like every time I tell people that oh I'm a tenant farmer now it still hasn't sunk in um, and I, I guess until the animals come here we actually start having produce selling it'll keep sinking in but yeah it's it's a weird feeling definitely a weird feeling right this field is called railway field because there's a railway line there again very original um, this is called I think it's bottom park and that's called park field uh, on that end there there's a fence somewhere there um, but how good does the wood look from this end the, the lighting is not doing it justice but you can see like, the different types of trees and there's some fairly old trees in there. I think there's one we were talking the other day with someone and he reckoned 150 years old which I think uh, as a human I've lived what 32 years you think oh my god that's that's a fair bit and you see uh, a living thing that's lived for 150 years and it's it, it's still chilling like it's nothing it just yeah it makes you feel a bit not to sound too I don't know what's the word but yeah it makes you feel a bit insignificant maybe that's just me but yeah so back to fields railway field has as you can see has been used for um, horses um, historically Rex we've got a couple of horses up there which don't belong to me obviously because I'm not uh, that much of a horsey person I appreciate them but I don't really I wouldn't really keep them um, but we've got uh, some neighbors that have decided to uh, or one they used to one of them used to raise the horses here and obviously they're gonna gonna have to be moved and the other one decided to move the horse in here but yeah that's a story for another day um, but my plan is or our plan is uh, myself and Nikki is that because the fields have already been fenced like that they'll work very nicely for groups of pigs and I could just paddock it like that but obviously because that grass there probably has it's I don't know how old it is I don't know when the last time it got reseeded so my plan is pigs in rip plant pigs in rip plant pigs in rip plant um, and some fields are probably sowed by hand as uh, my friend uh, Amy who does that down in the southwest with our pigs and it seemed to work it's much cheaper probably not as accurate but um, yeah we live and learn uh, if we make mistakes then it'll be that part of the journey um, but yeah I'm looking to use them as grower and finisher paddocks along there uh, and then this one potentially because we've got a slope to the uh, we've got a slope down there to dust the water course there if I was to use it for pigs I might split it halfway so I'm not going too close to the water course and then probably keep sheep and sheep and goats down that way because again plenty of shelter from the trees there I think it's some uh, uh, some trees that will be good for forage for goats I can't remember their names uh, down there and uh, yeah so that, that's a rough plan for this this patch uh, also I've got to do soil testing it's sounded starting to get a bit more expensive now um, I've got to do soil testing because my thinking for that is um, treating rather than treating all the fields the same uh, I want to know what I'm working with before putting anything in 
and by anything I mean that massive mass pile you saw I'm not spending any money on fertilizer pig feeds more ex is, ex is expensive as it is so yeah Ho hopefully I'm not gonna need any um, and also having this stock on here should be fertilizer as it is um, what was I gonna say but we need to upgrade the fencing as well um, along along these fields we put some electric fence too just to make it a bit stock proof because one thing I don't want to hear or get is a phone call from railway people telling me that there's a pig on the tracks that will not go down well and I'm pretty sure it probably cost a bit of money too and even on the on the front of so, uh, soil testing like I know to me I'm quite an office because again I've not had to worry about soil testing but like you know looking at a field like this it's quite hard here and solid whereas down there where it's close to the water water course is quite soft and stodgy so even in one field you probably get different um what's the word oh my god i'm gonna can't think of a technical term but yeah the, the results from down there will be different from the from the results up here um but yeah so hopefully i, I might have to do a field at a time depending on how expensive the soil tests are but yeah here are my guests pretty cool looking actually but don't really want them here they're friendly enough but again don't really want them here then we're back around to the main yard um, this bit here Nikki's keen to have some chickens so I reckon this will be perfect for chickens. This little spot probably needs a bit of TLC, but make you fox proof and all that. But uh, yeah, this bit will be Nikki's patch. Uh, probably this field, uh, I don't know, probably graze it or even use it as like a, I think so, some of the loading out of those fields won't be that easy. So I'm thinking on market days or going to slaughter run the animals through there here use it as like a holding pen probably set something up up there where the gates are and come back to the truck pick him up and take him to market or abattoir so yeah that's that's the wood from this side my favorite spot looking forward to walking through that having a cup of coffee in the morning listening to the birds sound about 50 years old but I don't care so just driven from um, uh, where the farm the yard the house is the yard uh, to just across pretty much just across the railway line to this other spot we've got which is a livery yard um, which is I don't know how long it's been a livery yard for but the previous tenant has been here um, 17 odd years so it's always been a livery yard so um, it's going to carry on being a little yard for a, what, a few years to see um, try and because initially the plan was to stop the livery yard and put the land into or put stock on the land but by looking at what the land is which you'll see in a sec it's been uh, it's quite depleted of nutrients to say the least and compacted because it's been a yard for so long and um, my suggestion was that rather than take the horses off and find out the stock to regenerate the land, why don't we use the horses and manage it better um, and uh, yeah, regenerate the land like that. And also another aspect is from a, a social, social perspective, um, it's space for 13 horses here. So um, new farmer, cut, okay i can see it now a new farmer comes to um the community and gets rid of 13 horse owners um to 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 keep livestock yeah i don't think that would go down well so for me um yeah i thought it'd be good to at least even if it's phasing it off rather than just cut it um just like that uh yeah i thought phasing off is much easier than just cutting off and also from an um income side let's not lie delivery they pay to keep the horses here so to start with that's yeah that's definitely gonna 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 help us going from sort of employed to part-time to self-employed it's a it's a nice little bridge um other 
yeah, otherwise it could be could be a bit bleak to be honest. So I just changed the camera. So that's the yard at the moment as it is. So fairly fairly old. Needs needs a bit of TLC, which um, we will do this summer um, with the weather being dry, painting, renovating some of the doors, um, changing where the muck is uh, kept. Luckily, a, a local local farmer has um, a, helped me get rid of get rid of the muck because obviously I haven't got machinery, um, and I think. I'm hoping that more I'll have more interaction with the local farmers um, just to work together because we've only got 61 acres and machinery people might not want to hear this so close your eyes now eyes ears ears sorry not eyes um, what's the point of me having all the kit just sitting in the yard for 61 acres there isn't any um, so working together with local farmers hopefully I'm friendly enough for them to be able to work with me or to us to help each other and also my four-legged smelly friends also act as tractors so definitely gonna use the pigs as much as I can just to dig, dig the ground up uh, but yeah I'll just turn the camera around so you can see the, the land so yeah as you can see the land needs more than TLC um, TLC squared so it goes all the way down that way to the end probably past where that tree is there will be another equal distance again down there um, and we've got we've got another woodland in here which again never knew I'd like woodlands that much very exciting um, there's also another little I, it's dry at the moment so I don't know whether it's just built as a when it when the roads as a drain for the road because the road is just there or there's just a drain for the road i don't know but that's definitely dry whereas the other one is running um so yeah we'll walk walk down here again looking at this as an african as a kenyan i'm just thinking this is goat heaven this is literally goat heaven here it's a cool type of gate i've never seen this one before litter once again humans doing their their bit to help the environment not yeah this could do with cutting back or put some goats here for a day honestly i think i'm gonna use animals to do as much of the work as as, as possible um plenty of bathtubs I'm assuming they're troughs. Actually, I'll just climb this. I can't be bothered to. And do the gate. Uh, yeah, so the bathtubs, I think, were used for water. And I think, how the hell do they get them here? The people that use bathtubs for water. Okay, I imagine, unless you've got a truck, I guess you could fit a truck there. So heavy old thing to carry. I guess you could put it on the horse. Um, so, yeah, this goes all the way. This will go this way first and then come back and look at the wood in there this is um, part of the other field again goat goats sheep yeah they 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 love this it the the rabbits seem to be enjoying this spot there's so many rabbits here um, I don't know what time of the year myxomatosis comes in but it needs to hurry up one of the horses from the yard there I think it's a stallion um, someone's been swinging here. I don't. I, I don't know what that is. Um, there doesn't seem to be drainage there. So again, I got definitely need to look at the drainage maps for the farm or for the yard here and the farm up there. Cause yeah, I don't. I don't know where the drain. The don't really know much about the drainage. A week in, which probably could be excused for. But yeah, like all this forage, fodder for goats. I think one of the things I mean, oh shit. Oh my God. There's a fox with cubs there. What? Hmm. Now, 
bit that's going to create some debate in the the people watching a cub never seen a fox cub actually that is pretty cute right i got distracted i got distracted by the the foxes Once i've never seen fox cub before how they disappeared anyway as i was saying um actually would would a fox mom chase me well i hope it doesn't because i've got laggy old weddies if i do get chased i'm finished they must have their den in there somewhere and the way i've been walking here with oh just come and check me out i've been walking here with rex so i never thought we were here yesterday day before yesterday I never thought anything of it. Look at it. This is so cool. Country fight, leave your heart out. Yeah, so as I was saying, I'm panicking now about this fox. As I was saying, um, the more been walking and the more the, the whole thing has been sinking in that I actually have a farm now, I'm just thinking all the things I saw my relatives doing back home i still see doing back home with regards to farming i can actually practice that here and i think yes i've farmed in the uk yes ow ow ow, ow. too many brambles here these need clearing up yes i've farmed in the uk for 13 years or all my farming career as a as a job has been in the uk I can't forget my African roots or the way things were done back home. I think this was the electrical people clearing up and putting some logs for me there for the fire. Uh, but yeah, again, like looking at all this, you know, this could be left here as a habitat for some species. Don't know what. But I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure what this water is. Uh, but yeah, this goes, the railway line's just there, as you can see. So the fence would have to be solid if I've got goats here, because from seeing some of my friends' goats, goats, I describe goats as um, ruminant pigs, because they're always up to mischief, and pigs are always up to mischief as well. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely try and farm it as an African. <laughs> uh, obviously, weather permitting, because back home we've got completely different weather systems to here so but yeah i think yeah the fundamentals for me i can't i've got to, i've got to go to what i know or what what what's in my dna and that's not spending too much money as the first one but i guess that's in all farmers dna here's another this is that bit which i i was saying i don't think is a like a, a waterway i think that's just water coming from uh, the road or something but yeah, when I'm brave enough one day, I've got more time. I'll follow it down there and see where it goes. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the um, farm. It's not as yeah, 61 acres. That's like a garden for some people, but that's a lot. And I'm glad we only got 61 acres and not more than that because I don't think I would have known what to do with it. But I'm excited. Um, what's ahead the challenges and the and the good bits because challenges will be there and i'd rather prepare for challenges and not have any than prepare for no challenges and get some uh, and uh yeah i will document our journey as much as i can and hopefully i'll learn from people watching because people will be doing different things um and hopefully some people might learn from me the little that i know and um hopefully oh, just navigating through the brambles um yeah i look forward to, to sharing our journey with you thank you for watching and if you haven't subscribed you know what to do